Come with me as we journey with a boy as his knowledge grows. After asking his question, where did all the bees go? This is a tale that shows a bleak future, unless someone cares a whole awful lot. Our second story is called The Beeswax. Once upon a time, there lived a young man named Adam who lived in a house near the countryside. During the warm months, Adam liked to sit on his porch and enjoy the sights, smells, and sounds of wildlife coming from a field near his home. And in particular, he loved to watch the busy bumblebees as they darted from one fragrant flower to the next. It amazed him how fast they zoomed around and how hard they seemed to work. Sometimes, he wondered, why were they in such a hurry? He would imagine them bringing all of the sweet pollen they collected back to their little bumblebee homes that lie somewhere close by, but hidden from sight. A day came, however, when all of this changed, and the busy wild noises and smells of the wildflower field suddenly vanished. It was early in the morning when he heard a loud noise coming from the field outside. He ran out onto his porch to see what all of the commotion was about, and there he saw a large truck removing all of the plants in its path. In a matter of minutes, all of the beautiful flowers that he had enjoyed all season were flattened. These were the first steps taken to convert his special place into something else entirely. His mom assured him what was happening wasn't all bad. In fact, what they were planning to do over there was helping the environment in a different way. You see, a solar energy company had recently purchased this field and planned to build a huge solar farm capable of supplying power to hundreds of homes. If clearing this field meant fewer fossil fuels were being used, this must be a good thing, right? What his mom told him made a lot of sense. Sure, he loved watching the amazing bumblebees, but as he learned in school, solar panels are a type of green energy which helps to prevent climate change. What did pretty flowers and cute bumblebees do besides give him something fun to watch while he sat on his porch? Still, the eerie silence that now filled the air left Adam feeling sad and uneasy. Tired of wondering, he decided to take matters into his own hands and go figure this out for himself. But there was too much misinformation on the internet. He knew he had to find a real scientist to explain things to him. So he called up the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to see if they could help. He was delighted to find out that, in fact, there was such a biologist that knew much about the bumblebees. He was known to be one who spoke for the bees. He was the beeswax. The beeswax was out in the forest, conducting a survey as part of a large research project. Adam decided he would venture to where the beeswax was studying to see if he could help him. Oh, Mr. Beeswax. Yes, that's what they call me. What can I do for you? Hi, I'm Adam. I was wondering if you could answer some questions. I'm not sure if I can, but I'll sure try. What questions do you have? I live near a field that was once filled with many insects, such as bumblebees, but it's been cleared away to put up some solar panels. And everyone says that this is a good thing, and I agree. Yet, I still wonder about the bumblebees that once lived there. Is it okay that they're all gone? Let me tell you a tale of a time before the invention of solar panels. Before we use the land to supply our great needs and wants for our modern day creature comforts, close your eyes and think back to a time a long, long time ago. Long before there were humans. A really long time ago. Yes, the time of the dinosaurs. How cool to see these creatures. But wait, what's that humming sound from those bushes over there? 
Let's look a little closer. Wow! Can you believe it? A fuzzy little bee is flying around this bush. That's right. Bees existed during the times of dinosaurs. Fossil records indicate that bees have been around for about a hundred million years. Did a dinosaur ever get stung by a bee? Maybe, but we'll never really know. But what we do know is that after the dinosaurs went extinct, floral diversity around the world exploded. Many scientists hypothesize that the rich diversity of plants that began to populate the Earth is directly correlated to the existence and increase in diversity and populations of bees. Bees would have played an intricate part in pollinating and cross-pollinating plants. Over the millions of years since dinosaurs became extinct, bees and plants have evolved together. Both have developed incredible mechanisms for coexisting. Plants providing bees with food, and bees helping plants to distribute their pollen from flower to flower. Flash forward to today. The great diversity of plants and bees that we now know have been studied for years, and we have come to understand some very interesting things about bees. In what we now know as North Carolina, there are over 500 different species of bees. Minor bees, leafcutter bees, mason bees, carpenter bees, sweat bees, metallic bees, and my personal favorite, the bumblebees. Those round, hairy little buggers just make me smile every time I see one buzzing amongst the flowers. We are closely connected to bees, plants, and the partnerships that they have developed. Honeybees, which are not native to North America, account for about $30 billion of agricultural production. But guess what? Our native bees are just as important. Native bees, including all the solitary bees and bumblebees, account for an additional $30 billion of agricultural production. Wow, I had no idea bumblebees were so connected to the environment. It seems that they are not only a wonder to be seen, they also do a lot of important things in nature. But sir, you still haven't answered my question about whether it's okay that they're not around my house anymore. Just because I don't see them, they still can be found in a lot of other places, right? Sadly, Adam, that is not so. And for this reason, I am the beeswax, and I speak for the bees. I speak, I speak for, for the bees, bees for the bees, bees cannot, cannot say the things, things that are wiping, wiping their species. Their species. <laughs> you see, Adam, unfortunately, populations of our native bees are in serious decline. Over the past few decades, we have seen a decrease in bee species diversity and bee populations everywhere. What's causing the declines, you ask? Well, it's a number of things. Things like disease, invasive species, and pesticide use are affecting many species. Another reason, climate change. Climate change is having a drastic effect on bee populations, especially bumblebees. But of all the reasons for decline, one stands out as the biggest reason. You might ask yourself, what could be worse than pesticides, climate change, and diseases? The answer is loss of habitat. Loss of habitat is one of the biggest threats to all species, especially bees. As humans have developed natural areas by paving roads and parking lots, building homes and buildings, and creating huge monoculture industrialized farms, we have destroyed essential habitat for bees in the process. As we've done this, we have replaced native plants and flowers that have evolved alongside the bees with non-native patches of plants and grassy lawns. We have taken away the habitats that bees need for nesting, feeding, and overwintering. For these reasons, the populations of many of the 500 species of bees in North Carolina are in decline. Of the 17 species of bumblebees in North Carolina, seven are listed as species of greatest conservation need. Well, there's got to be something we can do. We can't let them disappear. We just can't. Oh, but there is. Take this. Plant it near your home and you will see. All is not lost for our friend the bee. Well, Adam, it's time for me to go. It was good talking with you. Achoo! The very next day, Adam planted his seed in a pot on his porch, and for the next few weeks,
carefully tended to it until it grew and began to make bright, fragrant flowers. One late afternoon, a familiar black and yellow body buzzed past him and landed on one of the flowers. The bumblebee stuck half of her body into the flower and came out with a golden powdery dust covering all of her little hairs. Adam thought back to the last words Beeswax said to him as he tossed him the seed. All of them are afraid of now he understood what he meant by this. If we bring back our native plants and flowers, we are providing pollinators with nourishment, and they will also come back. And if we see the land as a place not only for humans to use, but for all of the other wild creatures that live around us, perhaps places like solar farms can help all living things and not just ourselves. And that's the end of our second fable. And stay tuned for next week's chapter of our storybook series as we learn about more native pollinators. Good luck, have fun, keep exploring. <laughs>